Hi there my magical star beings, this is Psychic Siren Tarot and welcome to the channel. In today's reading we're going to be taking a look at the impression you make to others when you're around them. Please be aware that this is a general reading so only take what resonates, leave the rest. We have three piles to choose from so choose whichever one you are most drawn to. So for pile one, we have Amazonite with the Queen of Pentacles. For pile two, we have Lapis Azuli with the Scribe. And for pile three, we have Red Jasper with the Two of Swords. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pick a pile. Hopefully by now you have picked a pile. If not, you can pause the video. Once you're done picking a pile, please find the timestamps for your pile in the description box below and then I'll see you at your reading. Hi there my pile number ones, if you chose this Amazonite crystal and the queen of pentacles, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at the impression you make to others when you're around them, please be aware that this is a general reading, so only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider hitting the subscribe button if you like tarot content and if you like this reading. I am going to be doing a giveaway when I reach 25k subscribers, so if you'd like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment on any of my recent uploads. So we're just going to use tarot for these piles today. I, I didn't really feel the need to use oracle cards today. So let's see what shows up for you. I just want to shuffle this well. So spirit guides of pile number one. Spirit guides of pile number one. The impression they make on others when they're around them. The impression they make on others when they're around them. So what impression do they make to others? So we have the Ace of Wands showing up next. We have the Hero. We have Intuition. We have the Seven of Cups. So one thing I see about you is a lot of these impressions you make on others are maybe what they think they're picking up from your vibe. So they may be picking up on your vibe accurately or non-accurately. You'll just let me know in the comments, but this is the impression they make of you. So what impression they make of you is kind of like, you're very down to earth, very grounded, um, that you may have dealt with certain insecurities within your lifetime, but you're actively trying to build more of the sense of confidence within yourself and almost like play around with your sense of self, play around with building and, you know, getting excited with finding different parts of yourself and expressing that to the world in some way, shape or form. So people might get the impression of you that you know, even though you've dealt with certain insecurities and you have been seen as quite humble in some way, and I'm feeling that type of energy where let's say somebody compliments you and then you maybe don't fully accept it. Maybe there's some kind of change here where you're learning to accept it more, even in moments when you don't fully believe it, or even in moments when it, it feels uncomfortable saying thank you. I, I just see an energy like that where people get the impression of you that you're actively trying to build a sense of confidence and your overall sense of self. You know, a healthy sense of self-worth where I'm seeing your identity be reshaped in a way where you almost view it as I'm creating my own identity because I'm seeing uh, somebody almost look at themselves like they're a character in a game and they can make this character however they want. They can dress this character up however they want on different days. It's kind of like that energy of self-expression and creativity. 
you know, through that self-expression. So maybe people get the impression of you that you like to dress up, you like to sort of play around with that because it just brings you joy. Maybe there's something about like getting ready in the mornings brings you joy, you know, making yourself feel beautiful or handsome in the mornings brings you joy, kind of like that energy is coming through. People may also get the impression of you that you are almost like a cat, a little bit distant at first, but once you trust a person, you're all so cute and cuddly. <laughs> um, I heard goody two-shoes, but that's not necessarily bad. Uh, I feel like people get the impression of you that you're a good person and that you won't necessarily do anything to harm anybody like you're completely harmless completely just wholesome but some people I guess let's just say you don't want to partake in certain activities they do and because you won't be pressured into that they may label you as a goody two-shoes but that's not necessarily true okay so that's not everybody but that's somebody um some people might have false impressions of you because I feel like you have boundaries up and you won't do what they want you to do. And so, you know, like when you try to go over to a cat and pet it and it doesn't want to be pet and then people label that cat as like mean, but really, you know, we should respect all animals' boundaries and all people's boundaries. So it's kind of like when people don't respect your boundaries and you kind of have some pushback, they get very agitated with you. It's almost like a, a sense of wanting to control you, but you're not able to be controlled is what I'm hearing from spirit. So that is the impression people make of you that, you know, you hold your boundaries up, you're not going to do anything you're uncomfortable with, and they're not going to do anything to change your mind or control you in any way, shape or form. Um, the spider has come up twice. The spider spiritual meaning may be significant. You may want to Google it because there's one here and here. And spider webs basically represent creativity, but also creating your reality. To me, they also represent protection. So the one thing I see about your energy is it's quite protected and there's also something about you being creative. That's the impression people get of you, whether that's true or not. Uh, people also get the impression that you can make your home look beautiful, that you'd be a good mother or father. Um, because when I think of spiders, I think of them creating their web for their home. And it's it's kind of like that energy. And I'm thinking of spiders making eggs is it eggs or baby spiders I don't really know but I'm just thinking of that uh, people also get the impression of you that you're quite wise that you're very loyal to those you love and that you can be protective over those you love but that you're slow to show all of those qualities or traits unless you really know that person well so I don't mean that you're not loyal in in the first you know meeting but what I mean by that is let's say you're not friends with a person yet you don't necessarily have any loyalty towards them yet so you know you're you're a little bit distant at first but once they once things change within your relationship and they become a friend to you or you know some kind of deeper relationship to you then you show your loyalty um, and people get the impression of you that you're a little bit quiet at first, especially if you don't like a person, or that you're just quiet at first until you know the person better. So some people think that you're quiet around them because you dislike them, but then I think that sometimes maybe you're just shy or you just don't know them that well yet, so you're not going to force a conversation or maybe you do dislike them, I don't know. But then other people feel like maybe you're just waiting to get a little bit more comfortable and you're a little bit more chatty around people you're close to. People also get the impression of you that 
Okay, you're very hot in some way, you're very sensual in some way, and I love to express that sensuality in healthy ways with a healthy partner or partners, whatever resonates with you. But there is this feeling as well, I was going to say something about you've been through a lot in life, you've actively tried to heal from that and that you're taking your power back from that. Nobody's come to save you from the experiences you went through. You had to save yourself and pick yourself back up. And as you started to heal, as you started to grow as a person, you started to bloom. People can tell that you're a person that's blooming at your own pace. And that, you know, like, you can't necessarily force a flower to bloom before its time. So you bloom slowly but surely, but, you know, when you're able to be in an environment that sort of excites you and makes you feel safe and makes you feel at peace, then you're able to bloom at a beautiful pace. There is this no BS attitude, yet at the same time, you're quite sweet. I also hear intelligent, very wise. Very multidimensional, you're not one to be put in a box, very unique. That's the impression they get of you. Okay, so what else? We have the Nine of Wands. Next we have Destiny. So also people get the impression of you that you would be faithful to your partner um, in terms of sensuality, if you get what I mean. Uh, and that you expect the same in return, that you're more so want monogamous connections. And if you aren't in a connection that you just want the same in return, that you would be loyal and faithful, but you'd want the same in return. People also get the impression of you that you have a big destiny or purpose that you're meant to fulfill, something big you're meant to be doing within your career. That maybe has to do with your spiritual gifts, with the intuition card here. Maybe people can tell that you can read them in some way, that you are very intuitive in some way. We have the Maiden. We have the Nine of Cups. People get the impression of you that you find the magic through the daily little things you find. Uh, that you love pets in some way, you love animals. I don't know why, but I'm just seeing somebody, you know, maybe with this image go on a walk and see a cute little squirrel or something. <laughs> and you just find so much magic and joy within a little thing like that, whereas most people would just pass by and not even notice a squirrel. People get that impression of you that you find the, the magic in the little mundane moments of life. The moments we often overlook. You are someone with big dreams, goals and wishes, but you also don't forget to find the magic uh, within the present moment. Because there's always something more we wish for, but there's... A present within the present moment, I'm hearing. A gift within the present moment. So people can also get the impression of you that you try to stay present. The father's in reverse here. So I don't know if some of you resonate with not having a stable father figure growing up or not having one at all. But I don't know, people kind of get that impression of you or that maybe you didn't have a good relationship with your father. So with the Nine of Wands here and the Destiny card, people can tell that you're meant to be doing something big, but they don't exactly know if you know that yet or if it's challenging for you to find what your true purpose is. We have the Five of Swords. Um, in this Five of Swords card, in this specific tarot deck, it talks about finding our true self and taking off the mask. So people definitely get that impression of you, like I said before, that you're trying to find 
you know, your true self that you're trying to express that to the world and not express a false mask to the world that's not even real. There's also this deep connection to ancestors and a protection from your ancestors. We have thought. I don't know if you're open about your intuition, but some people kind of get scared that you can read their thoughts or their mind. Then we have the Seven of Cups and no, Seven of. I think this is the Seven of Wands. Yeah, Seven of Wands, and she's looking into a scrying bowl. So again, the intuition message is coming up. It's kind of like you have eyes at the back of your head. You can't be fooled. You can't be lied to. You can't be bullshitted. Um, and it's kind of like people just wonder if you, if you know what their intentions are or if you can read their mind or if you know what they're thinking of you all the time. Uh, especially if they don't really know how intuition works, maybe they're scared of you a little bit sometimes, where they're like, I hope she or he or they don't try to read my mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, anything else? Queen of Wands, yeah, definitely trying to find more confidence within yourself, build your sense of self. Did you see how many cats came up within this reading? Cat here, cat here, uh, here... So that's just weird, but this is where I'm going to leave your reading because that's all I'm getting for you. I really hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pal number twos. If you chose this Lapis Azuli crystal and the scribe, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at the impressions you make on others, when you're around them. So please be aware that this is a general reading, only take or resonates, leave the rest. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider hitting the subscribe button if you like tarot content and if you enjoy this reading. Also, I'm going to be doing a giveaway when I reach 25k subscribers, so if you'd like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment on any of my recent uploads. So, there is something Spirit wants to tell me with this pile, so just bear with me as I explain the kind of story behind this crystal that you chose. Because I forgot about the story behind this crystal and then Spirit reminded that to me in a vision when I was doing your intro and, you know, waiting for my phone to charge finish. Uh, anyhow, I had this crystal as a full crystal, but it broke in half after somebody with very negative energy touched it. And I'm not just saying that as a sort of projection onto this person they were really mean to me and I somehow let them touch my crystal I don't know why and right after that it broke that person said to me that I'm weird and sort of made me feel bad for being weird and I remember I was at this party and well it's not really a party but like a sort of house party but not a lot of people and she came there and I was doing a reading for one of my friends and she was like to me are you a witch and she kept like being standoffish to me and like rude to me in some way and made me feel weird but what I'm taking from that is with the scribe here maybe people can tell immediately that you're a spiritual person Maybe you give off that vibe that you're a spiritual person. Because this card to me always reminds me of the Akashic Records. And the feathers in the card remind me of our ancestors, our connection to our ancestors. So what I take from me being shown that vision of uh, the story behind this crystal is that you're very protected. You know, like, let's say somebody touches an object of yours with negative or bad energy. That object is going to break so that that negative energy doesn't go towards you. If somebody, you know, speaks badly about you, they're going to just receive instant karma where it backfires to them or does something bad to you. 
people just get that impression from you, that vibe of like, I shouldn't mess with pile two because something bad's going to happen to me. And they don't know why, but they just, they just feel the vibe like, I, I shouldn't mess with pile two. It's sort of like an intimidating vibe. But also with the scribe here, there's a feeling here of the Akashic records. And I felt a throat chakra energy in which maybe you had a witch wound within a past life because I take a blocked throat chakra. I felt like a blockage there, but I don't like to use the word blockage. I take it as a witch wound because we're talking about the Akashic records and usually when we talk about witch wounds, it goes back to not being able to express your spiritual gifts in a past life. It doesn't necessarily mean that you were a witch, but they often labeled us spiritualists as witches. They often, you know, demonized us spiritualists, people with spiritual gifts in those past lives because they could not understand us. And now in this lifetime, you're getting the opportunity to reveal your spiritual gifts to people without being cast away or cast out from a society or, you know, actually trigger warning unalived because of your spiritual gifts. Nowadays, we live in a different time and age where it's becoming more Pre prevalent in the community like spiritualism so you're getting this chance to actually share those gifts with the world but maybe because of that witch wound due to the past lives there's this sort of fear around sharing that with others because what if it makes you know me look weird or makes uh you know the person think I'm like this or this or that you know so I don't know, people kind of get that impression of you that you're a unique person that, you know, people might have made you feel sort of weird for just existing, even though you're unique and different. And there's nothing weird about you. I feel like everybody has their own quirks, but a lot of people don't necessarily show it out of fear of being cringe or weird or, you know, people looking at them funny. So I feel like what I'm seeing here is maybe people get the impression of you that you're quite spiritual, that you're quite protected by spirit, that in this lifetime you have huge gifts or talents that you're meant to share to the world. If they're not spiritual gifts, then maybe talents you're meant to share with the world, but maybe some part of you scares, is scared of, you know, like fully putting yourself out there because of the reaction of others. And maybe there's something about fully being your authentic self in the world and not letting other people sort of shame you out of being yourself. I guess there was maybe a reason why Spirit showed me that. I'm not even offended by it anymore. Like I, like I said, I even forgot about it. But Spirit reminded me of the vision as I looked at your pile. So I think it's relevant to your reading, which is why I mentioned it. We have knowledge. We have faith. Um, I just need to cover this card. I need to find a crystal. <laughs> so I need a big enough crystal. Okay, we have integrity. So this card is nude. That's why I'm covering it. And we have death and rebirth. So... Firstly, when people see you with this card coming out that is nude, people are, a lot of people are attracted to you physically, find you quite seductive in some way physically. Um, your energy sort of feels very tempting and alluring in some way. And a lot of people sometimes have certain fantasies about you and then hide it from you or hide the fact that they're attracted to you. I'm getting a weird energy now that I'm not sure if I want to say, but Spirit's showing me it. So don't shoot the messenger, but this is just what I'm feeling. Some people desire you, but then they try to hide the fact that they desire you. Some people feel attracted to you or find you very attractive, even if they're not necessarily attracted to you. They find you beautiful or handsome and 
it's sort of like they don't want to give you compliments. Um, even some people that are attracted to you. And you'll usually find this in... Okay, let's say you are having somebody that wants to date you and they never compliment you. It's not to say that it's always this, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just not giving thought to it and not being thoughtful enough to actually compliment you. But other times it's because they themselves are insecure and they don't want to make you big headed because they think that you should already know that you're hot. Like you can see it in the mirror. So why should they tell you? But not even just people that want to date you, but like, let's just say there's another person and they're not necessarily attracted to you or your gender, but uh, they they can admit that you're beautiful or handsome, but they won't compliment you because they don't want you to get too big headed. I don't know what that's about, but it's kind of like, I, I feel weird giving that message because it feels sort of backhanded. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels backhanded. It feels like a slap in the face because everybody deserves compliments. You know, some people are quite beautiful or handsome and some days they don't feel their best and maybe they deserve that compliment too. So who are they to assume that you would get big-headed because of that? How can they assume that you're going to get egotistical because of that? I, I just don't get that. But anyways, let's move on from that. We have death and rebirth here. So people kind of get the impression of you that you've rebirthed a lot within your own life. You've had a lot of endings happen. But through those endings, you found transformation and a rebirth. Through those endings, you found new beginnings. And you found lots of wisdom and knowledge. You've had to find some kind of faith within the divine. You've had to uh, sort of like trust the divine. I don't know what my voice did there. Um, you've had to sort of trust the divine. I think I mixed my words together almost. Uh, in those moments where you were at your lowest place. And yeah, people kind of just pick up that you've gone through low lows within your life. But you're strong enough to get through that and move forward from that and still transform. So that's something I definitely see and you've had to develop your own sort of connection to the divine, whether that's to the universe, to God, religion, spirituality, whatever it is, it's like you've had to find your own connection, not necessarily learn from others, but find what you're comfortable with. So what other cards do we have? What impression do they make on others when they're around them? So we have the Three of Wands. We have the Eight of Cups. We have the Nine of Pentacles in the reverse. So people get the impression of you that you're a little bit more spiritual, that you're not necessarily a materialistic person. People also get the impression of you that you can be independent when you're single, but when you're in a relationship with somebody, um, it's not that you're not independent anymore, but you also allow yourself to receive and you, uh, be soft, you know. There's also this feeling here of you not being materialistic or too focused on the physical aspects of reality that a lot of people sort of get stuck in. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the material things within our reality because we came here to experience that. And I myself as a spiritual person am trying to allow myself to enjoy those things more without shaming myself but then sometimes we can also get trapped within that if we hold it too much within the hierarchy as the top thing we need to have you know um, of course we need money to survive but you know that it isn't the exact thing that is going to bring you fulfillment so I'm seeing that and I'm feeling the throat chakra energies again. So there's something about 
you learning to speak up for yourself more. It may not be easy for you to do so, but you're learning to. And also getting rid of people-pleasing habits and codependency is something I definitely see. People get the impression of you that you welcome them with open arms, that you're very open to them uh, with your body language, but then like you also try to sort of make jokes and make the other person feel comfortable, you know, like you bring this playful, lighthearted energy to the room, to the situation, right? People can also tell that, you know, when you leave the conversation that you want it to end on a good note. And that is something I see that you care about making a positive impression of pe on people. People also get the impression of you that you have quite a healing energy and healing hands and very wise, uh, almost telepathic in a way. So I'm definitely seeing that. It's like when they're around you, sometimes they get goosebumps in your energy or they just feel like your energy feels so good. They can't quite describe it, but it just feels good to be around you. So they like it. I feel like a lot of people see you as the type of person that, you know, doesn't want to focus on the things that have happened to you, but rather move forward and heal from it and not focus too much on the past, but more so live in the present moment. So what else? We have the child. People get the impression of you that you're not necessarily childish, but you still have your inner child with you, even with the dolphins, like you're very playful and people get the impression of you that, you know, like you want to be playful. You don't want to let the childlike part of you, that adventurous wonder for the world fade. You know, when you were a child and you saw life with so much color and there was no worries in the world and you're just on the playground making friends, like uh, you kind of sometimes give off that energy where sometimes, you know, being an adult, you know, you have a lot of responsibilities, but we shouldn't let go of that inner child part of us because that's where we really see the world with all its color and all the magic, you know what I mean? So I feel like you haven't lost that part of yourself, even if you're, you know, one day or right now for some of you in late adulthood, you still haven't lost that part of yourself and you won't ever lose that part of yourself. So I definitely see that with that message. Then we have the Eight of Wands. So people get the impression of you that you're very carefree and it's not that you don't have any responsibilities or things to take care of, you do, but you still want to like be free in the world and actually when I started your reading I heard a plane go by so you know with this card like she has bird feathers so it reminds me of like free spiritedness you know, wanting to fly all over the world. So maybe somebody here has that travel bug, wants to view the and see the whole world. And as I say that, I'm hearing that song by Magdalena Bay, where she talks about, I don't know what song it is, but she talks about like wanting to see different places and, you know, tick it off her bucket list before she dies. So that's something I see. Not that she's dying anytime soon, but just before, you know, her life ends, of course. We have the King of Fire, King of Wands. People may get the impression of you that you have a lot of people that are attracted to you, that try to flirt with you, um, and that can sometimes be annoying for you especially if people only like you for your looks or your body, because you can see through people's intentions. You can just see if somebody's just like, you know, wanting you because of superficial reasons or with bad intentions, like you can see through people. We have the six of 
uh, wands, but in this specific six of wands, it talks about conflict resolution. So people get the impression and vibe of you that you don't like conflict. You like to resolve conflict as soon as it happens. And in most cases, you would prefer no conflict at all. But you also understand that sometimes conflict needs to be had in order to come to a resolution and come to a different outcome. So sometimes conflict can actually bring something good where maybe we uh, begin to have more understanding and compassion for the other person, where we can begin to put ourselves in the other person's shoes, see why they were mad, and they also get to see why we were mad in the first place. So we have the King of Pentacles. Maybe for some of you, you even hold that mediator type of archetype. We have the youth. So again, you have a very youthful energy. Maybe there's also something about looking youthful for your age. I want to put a card over this without flashing you guys. Hopefully you didn't see anything there. Because uh, I don't want to get demonetized on YouTube. I don't want my video to get reported. Anyway, so with the youth, yeah, you look very youthful. You have a very youthful energy. And for a lot of you, I'm hearing people get surprised when they hear your age because they think you look a lot younger than your age. And for a lot of you, if you've heard that a lot, it's also because you have that youthful energy that I'm seeing it metaphorically from spirit that... You know, like when we play and when we still like see ourselves as, as young at heart in some way, we age less faster because we're embodying that youthful, playful energy. So it actually reflects within our skin where we age less faster. I hope that makes sense. I can't prove that, but it's just what Spirit's showing me. We have the Seven of Pentacles in the reverse, the Counselor in the reverse. So people get the impression from you that, yes, you have a lot of healing energy. A lot of people, you know, just feel comfortable coming up to you and talking to you about their life problems. But again, you are learning to hold stronger boundaries where, you know, you don't just allow people to just dump things on you, emotional dump on you, if you're not either in the mood to receive that or if you're not in the right headspace to to receive that. You're allowed to have your boundaries for certain things like that. So that is something people get from you that, you know, people usually just feel comfortable with you oversharing or emotional dumping on you because you have such healing energy, but that you're not going to just let people sort of override or cross your boundaries. Why is the King of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles reversed? Mm, okay, when it comes to romantic offers, because they're showing me King of Pentacles, King of Wands is like suitors, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean you're attracted to men. If you're attracted to women, you know, you could see that as Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. Anyhow, um, it's sort of like you know that you don't, like, you know when you don't want to be with somebody, like, you can just see through people, and you don't want to be a sort of, like, therapist for your partner, you don't want to be a mother or father to your partner, like, you want the both of you to be on the same level, and if the person hasn't grown enough and isn't emotionally mature, you don't want them, so people definitely get that impression of you, and the Destiny card also came out, with the Ace of Wands. So there's something about healing that witch wound and something about, you know, stepping into your destiny, uh, whatever it is you're passionate about with the Ace of Wands. For some of you, it could be stepping into creative gifts. And for others of you, it could be stepping into your spiritual gifts. So people get that impression that you're meant to be doing that in this lifetime. So this is what I have for you. This is where I'll leave your reading. I really hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.
Hi there my pile number threes, if you chose this red jasper crystal in the two of swords then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what impression you make on others when you're around them. So please be aware that this is a general reading so only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider hitting the subscribe button if you enjoy tarot content and if you like this reading. I am going to be doing a giveaway when I reach 25k subscribers, so if you'd like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment on any of my recent uploads. So with this Two of Swords card, we see a depiction of duality, the yin and the yang. So there's something about you giving off this vibe or impression to others that you are comfortable with your duality. You understand that in life there isn't just, you know, just love and life and just darkness, you know, we live in balance with both and we have to find harmony with both energies of our own. So there's something about integrating the shadow, learning from it and bringing light to it and bringing harmony to both energies where you are in balance. So people can tell that you maybe have two sides to you and you're comfortable with all the different sides of you, not in a bad way, but you're just not a just a one-dimensional person, you're unique and you have many different layers to you. And with the justice scales here as well, people can tell that you're very balanced, that you, you know, need balance within your life and you need harmony within your connections. You need reciprocal connections too. People can also tell that you're very honest and that you have a strong moral compass from the first impression they have of you. Although you're comfortable with your duality, you still have a strong moral compass that guides you to what is right and what is wrong. And you don't accept when other people do wrong things to you that are just not a part of, you know, the sort of morals you maybe have. And, you know, everybody has different values and morals, but we all know what is right and what's wrong. So, you know, if somebody does something completely wrong to you and they know it's wrong and then they say, oh, I didn't know that was wrong. Like, you you don't have uh, time for that. You know, uh, you don't have time for lies, for disrespect, things like that. So you respect others, you honor others, but if they're being disrespectful to you, then your cutoff game is strong, I'm hearing. We have the father. We have the hero. We have the five of swords. And we have the ace of cups. So people can maybe tell that you've dealt with certain betrayals or you've dealt with certain people not exactly being as loyal to you as you were to them. And it cut like a knife to your heart, you know. I don't want to trigger you, but people get that impression of you. Seven of Swords is at the back of the deck, which indicates deceit. But also with the Five of Swords here, this specific tarot card in this specific tarot deck talks about, you know, unveiling the mask and being your true authentic self in the world. So that has actually came up in Pile 1. And I think also Pile 2 had that message. So I feel like everybody watching this reading, you know, tries to be your authentic self in the world, tries to be your true self in the world and take off the mask, you know. So that is something people can definitely tell and get the impression of. This is my pile of ancestral cycle breakers. Some of you are mothers or fathers. And you want to treat your kids in a way where you're not putting the same things that were put onto you. You're not passing the same cycles down. I feel like you love your parents. For a lot of you watching, you respect them. But there are certain things you maybe don't agree with with the way you were parented and you want to do something different in the way you parent. 
and um, there's something about you wanting healthy relationships around you, you like wanting to not just not just have certain people around you and tolerate them and you know maybe they're not the best to you or the most genuine but you're just tolerating them and trying to almost save them or trying to fix them but you want people around you that are genuine and trustworthy and honest and you know reciprocate your love where you don't have to fix or save them in any way what impression do they make on others when they're around them so we have the eight of swords in the reverse you're not, you're not staying stuck in a victim mode that's what people get from you you're saving yourself from that picking yourself back up not wallowing in that pain um eight of wands you're moving forward from it freeing yourself from it liberating yourself from what you've experienced in life this pile has done a lot of shadow work i can just tell we have the nine of cups so with the nine of cups here and intuition there's something about wanting to not settle for less within your connections you know, I feel like certain people owe you apologies, six of wands, but then the six of wands represents conflict resolution, the specific tarot deck. So there's certain people that do owe you apologies, but you're not expecting that from them because you've waited, you waited, you waited, and you've received nothing. So you're taking it and you're, you know, trying to create your own closure and move forward from that and look for the types of relationships you actually do want that are fulfilling to you that make you content but you also want to learn how to build up your sense of discernment and you know grow your intuition in a way so that you're able to tell who's right for you and who's not right for you people can tell you know if they wrong you that you're open to an apology but that you wouldn't take them back so anything else besides what we've already spoken about in terms of the impression they make? We have the Four of Swords. So with the Four of Swords here, people get the impression of you that, you know, you want peace around you. You value peace within your connections to others and also just within your environments in general. So when things are very chaotic, you're not able to sort of be in your best mindset but when things are peaceful you're very content with that and you're able to sort of you know take action towards your goals and the things you want when you have peace but when things are just too chaotic it just makes your mind too too uh spirit is showing me like a hurricane I hope you get what I mean. It makes it too all over the place. There's something about you not liking conflict and rather wanting to resolve conflict sooner than later. You don't like to hold grudges with people either. Even if they hurt you or wrong you, you'd rather let it go than hold a grudge. And even if there is a sense of anger, I don't feel people feel you do revenge in any way. The Three of Swords. Um, it's like you've learned from your heartbreak, your pain. You've taken wisdom from that. I don't know why this keeps coming up. Can we get different messages now? Because I've already read this. Six of Swords. Love. This change is happening within your relationships, within what you allow yourself to receive from people the king of pentacles and the queen of pentacles this card came out in pile one if you were drawn the nine of wands is in reverse at the back of the deck i think spirit is sticking to this one theme within the reading um i wanted to get different messages which is why i'm like spirit can you give me something else as well but sometimes spirit just wants to talk about the one thing so even if I force other cards to come out, I can't necessarily force the messages I want. Because I also don't want this reading to be triggering, but 
Okay, what I'm seeing here is there's been a transformation in the way that you like are in your relationships. You're a lot less you're a lot less um tolerant of BS and nonsense. Like you have maybe come to a realization that love is not supposed to be that hard. You know, if somebody is not willing to grow with you, then you're eventually going to outgrow them and leave them behind and sort of change without them. So people get that impression of you that you need people that are willing to grow and change with you. Not that you expect them to change or anything, but if you're going to grow and they're not going to grow and they're going to stay stuck in one place, then eventually you're going to outgrow them because you're somebody that's constantly changing and growing. And although you love the person, you're not going to put yourself in situations where it's unhealthy to you. So you want to protect your heart because for you, you love hard. So when somebody, you know, isn't treating you the best or isn't loving you in the healthiest way, it really hurts your heart. Uh, but also letting go of somebody hurts your heart because you wouldn't want to do that. But it's like if somebody doesn't want to grow with you or work on the challenges so that the love isn't so hard, you know, you're going to eventually leave. So I think this is all I have for you. I hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.